Black holes are by far the most scary objects in space. Everything that goes inside will never come out again, even light and information. So what will we see if we have an indestructible spaceship and fly straight into it? Can we even travel to other universes through black holes? This is no science fiction, but more later. The truth is more extreme than most people think. Black holes come in a wide range of sizes, but none of them are small in terms of mass. A stellar black hole formed when a massive star collapses is usually between 5 and 20 times the mass of our sun. But that entire mass is squeezed into a sphere only about 30 to 60 kilometers across. Let's put that into perspective. If the Earth were to become a black hole, it would need to be compressed into a sphere just 1.8 centimeters across. But the largest black holes are super massive. The biggest one found so far is called Ton 618. It's over 66 billion times the mass of the sun. Its event horizon would be about 195 billion kilometers across. The human brain simply cannot comprehend these numbers. So I made this small animation to show you how gigantic these things are. See, this is our sun compared to the planets of our solar system. If we zoom out to this hypergiant star, we can't see our sun anymore. But this star is also nothing compared to one of the biggest supermassive black holes. It could fit the entire solar system and more inside it. Before we are flying into a black hole, we must know how they work to understand it. It all starts at the event horizon, the outer boundary of a black hole. It's not a surface or a shell. It's the point where escape becomes impossible, even for light. Once something crosses the event horizon, it can never return. One of the strangest effects near black holes is time dilation. According to Einstein's general relativity, time slows down in strong gravity. The closer you are to a black hole, the more time slows for you, compared to someone farther away. In space, there is a dimension called space-time. Just imagine it as a flat surface where every object in space lays on. Every object with mass will curve this surface. The more mass, the more space-time will bend. And black holes totally bend it, forming these funnels. That means time stops there. Let's say an astronaut is falling into a black hole. From their perspective, time feels normal. They see their clock ticking, and everything seems continuous. But someone watching from a safe distance would see their clock ticking slower and slower. The astronaut would appear to freeze near the event horizon. So let's say we build a spaceship that's completely indestructible. No gravity can crush it, and we send it into a black hole. The crew crosses the horizon with no sudden jolt. There's no barrier to hit. Space just keeps falling inward. Time feels normal to them, but they cannot send any information back. As they go deeper, gravity increases. Tidal forces stretch space and matter. Eventually, the ship reaches the core, the place where space and time stop behaving normally. According to classical general relativity, everything inside the event horizon is pulled to a single point, the singularity. This is where gravity becomes infinite, space-time curves infinitely, and all matter is crushed into zero volume. But most physicists think this can't be the full story. The singularity is a prediction of equations, but it may mean that our math is incomplete. The idea that a black hole could lead to another universe is one of the most speculative theories in theoretical physics, but it's grounded in serious attempts to understand space-time under extreme conditions. This concept suggests that the core of a black hole, instead of being a dead end, could act as a bridge or wormhole hub to a different region of space-time. In this view, the intense gravitational collapse doesn't end in a singularity that destroys all structure, but rather creates a highly curved funnel in space-time that continues elsewhere. This new space-time region could expand outward, forming a new separate universe, sometimes called a baby universe. From our side, it would appear that matter is lost to the black hole, but in the baby universe, that same matter could be the starting point for a whole new cosmos. This would require white holes, the opposite of black holes. In simple terms, it's a region of space-time that nothing can enter, but matter and light can escape. Think of it like a one-way exit door from the universe. You can't go in, but things can come out. White holes were first predicted as a mathematical twin of black holes. When physicists looked at Einstein's equations of general relativity, they realized, if you flip the timeline of a black hole, you get something that behaves exactly like a white hole. There is no clear evidence that white holes exist, but the interesting thing is, physics sometimes demands them. If black holes exist as solutions in Einstein's equations, then their mirror images, white holes, must also exist mathematically. And now, think about it. The Big Bang was a moment when everything, all matter, all energy, all space-time, erupted outward from a single point. Nothing could enter that singularity, but everything came out. That sounds eerily similar to how a white hole is described. The theory suggests that in another universe, a gigantic black hole swallowed more and more matter and energy, packing it into an extreme state. Eventually, the density and pressure became so enormous that instead of collapsing endlessly, all that energy burst outward. 
Not back into the same universe, but into a new one. In this framework, our universe could be just one link in a chain. Black holes in our cosmos might constantly create new universes on the other side. Those baby universes could have different physical constants, different particles, or even entirely different laws of physics. String theory also supports this idea. String theory is one of the most ambitious attempts to describe all of nature's forces with one framework. Instead of treating particles as tiny points, string theory suggests that everything is made of incredibly small vibrating strings. The way these strings vibrate determines whether we see them as matter, light, or other fundamental forces. Now here's where it connects to our topic. String theory does not only need the three dimensions of space and one of time. For the math to work, it requires additional dimensions, possibly 10 or even 11 in total. Most of these dimensions are hidden from our view, curled up so small that we cannot detect them. According to one idea within this theory, our universe is like a three-dimensional membrane floating inside this higher dimensional space. But we may not be alone. Other brains could also exist parallel to ours, separated by only a tiny distance in a higher dimension that we cannot perceive. But the entire idea of black holes leading to other universes is still completely hypothetical. One of the main challenges is that any such bridge would be unstable and likely collapse immediately, unless exotic matter, with negative energy, somehow keeps it open, which is purely theoretical. Nonetheless, the idea remains a serious candidate in the ongoing effort to understand what happens beyond the event horizon. Write your opinion in the comments. What do you think what we will see inside a black hole?